Welcome back, pilots. On this episode of How to Implement, we're doing two aircraft based on a single platform but have capabilities that are vastly different from each other. The Hawker Sidley, now BAE Systems Hawk, and Hawk 200. This is a continuous of the Light Attacker series of How to Implement, which we'll top off after with an explanation as to why the AC-130 can't be in-game in its current state. But for now, let's look at the BAE Systems Hawk and Hawk 200. The origins of the Bayhawk are similar to the Alpha Jet. When the RAF put out a requirement for a replacement for the fallen Nat in 1964, they considered the Sepikat Jaguar for the role. However, the Sepikat Jaguar became a nuclear-capable supersonic strike aircraft that would be too complicated for training, on top of having twin-seat Jaguars being purchased in small numbers. Hawker Sidley then began studies for a simpler trainer aircraft, and thus, the Hawk was born. The Hawk T-1 entered service in 1976 in an up-armed export variant, the Hawk 50 first flew in the same year. The BAE Hawk 200 came 20 years after the origin story of the Hawk. In 1984, the BAE Systems decided to improve the Hawk 50 into a more combat-oriented fighter as the Hawk 50 and later variants were essentially advanced trainers with combat capability. In 1986, 10 years after the Hawk 50 first flew, the Hawk 200 took flight. Two months later, the demonstrator was lost in the crash. Despite this, production continued and was first sold to Amman in 1990 with deliveries completed in 1993. The BAE Hawk is a twin-seater trainer with light attack capabilities. As with most aircraft in the same role, the Hawk is a small and light aircraft boasting a very small takeoff weight of 9100 kilograms. It is powered by different variants of the Rolls-Royce Turbomeca Adur without preheat capability. If the engine name is familiar, it's because it's the same engine family as the Sepikat Jaguar. The Hawk T1A uses the Adur Mark 151 and the Hawk T2 uses the Adur Mark 951. While the Hawk T1A has rudimentary avionics, lacks radars and countermeasures, the Hawk T2 tries to make up for this by including the BAE Sky Guardian RWR. The BAE Hawk 200 is a single-seat fighter with advanced anti-air and attack capabilities. While originally powered by the Adur Mark 871, the Hawk 200 was upgraded to the 951 that was on the T2 when the engine was certified for use in 2005. The Hawk 200, taking on more combat roles, had more avionics fitted such as the BAE Sky Guardian 200 RWR, chaff and flare dispensers, an inertial navigation system, and an ANAPG-66H radar, a variant of the F-16's radar. The front seat in the trainers houses the Ferranti ra laser rangefinder in a Marconi forward-looking infrared in lieu of the front seat. While the Hawk's house speed is below supersonic level flight, the Hawk boasts a very agile airframe combined with low-speed maneuverability. With its weapons, the Hawk can handle its own quite well. Speaking of weapons, let's take a look at the Hawk's weapons. Both the Hawk and Hawk 200 carry the 30mm Aiden cannon in a gun pack similar to the Harriers in game, albeit only a single gun is carried in the centerline pylon with 120 rounds. For air to air missiles, the Hawk T1A and Hawk T2 were both able to carry the A9L Sidewinders, albeit the T1A could only carry two while the T2 could carry four due to the incorporation of wingtip rails, allowing for two more missile hardpoints. The Hawk 120 and later expands the missile arsenal to include the ASRAM on Indian HAL built Hawks. There are talks that South African Hawks were able to fire the A Darter missiles. There was no confirmation whether it was certified to be mounted on the Hawk as well, as the A Darter was confirmed to be qualified on the Gripens, but not with the Hawk 120. The Hawk 200 can only fire AIM-9L and AIM-9M sidewinders as no expert customer utilizes other IR missiles for it, but the ANAPG-66H radar allows it to fire radar missiles like the AMRAM and Skyflash. For ground ordnance, the T1A can carry the standard suite of bombs on its two pylons, sacrificing air-to-air -air capability. Since the stores are limited to 1,500 pounds, the most definite you'd carry would be the 500-pound Mark M1 bombs, 
And as the Hawk T2 improves, this to carry a whole suite of 28 SNEB or CRB7 rockets on all four wing hardpoints on top of the 500 pound Mark M1 bombs. The Hawk, Hawk T2 standards are also said to allow it to drop the Denel Umbani guided bomb since the South African Air Force Hawk 120 was able to drop them in 2011. The Hawk 200, now fitted with a complete suite of flare and laser rangefinders, expands its ground ordnance to include the AGM-65 Maverick, Sea Eagle anti-shipping missile, and Paveway 2 guided bombs. The Hawk 200 is also cleared to drop Stingray torpedoes, but I'll omit that as Naval hasn't caught up to the Hawk's intended battle rating yet. Unlike the Alpha Jet, both the Hawk and Hawk 200 are extremely advanced right off the bat. The Hawk T1A starting with a really advanced AIM-9L air-to-air missile. The Hawk doesn't help by compounding its abilities by allowing it to fire more advanced weapons. While its flight performance are the same as the Alpha Jet, albeit with a stronger engine, the Hawk is essentially a plane whose missiles will do all of its talking. As such, I propose the Hawk T1A be at 10.3 with two AIM-9Ls, the Hawk T2 at 11.0 with four AIM-9Ls or ASRAMs, and the Hawk 200 be at 11.7 with all of its suites. All these aircraft should be at tier 7, with the Hawk T1A being after the Jaguar 340,000 RP, 1,020,000 SL purchase cost, and 300,000 Silver Alliance crew cost. The Hawk T2 follows after a 390,000 RP and 1,060,000 SL purchase cost with 310,000 SL crew cost. Finally, the Hawk 208. I chose the Hawk 208 as it's the only Hawk 200 variant to see actual combat. Should be after the Hawk T2 at 400,000 RP and 1,060,000 SL purchase cost and 330,000 SL crew cost. I considered it going after the FGR2 as a stopgap while the Eurofighter Typhoon still isn't added, but it makes more sense to just follow the line of Hawk variants after the Jaguar. The Indian-built Hawk with the ASRAMs could be an event vehicle, but I would advise against it being the ASRAM is such a very powerful missile to just give as an event vehicle. You know, the funny thing is I finished the script, recorded it, and edited it right after I saw the groundbreaking update teaser trip. Certainly interesting, and I'll wait for more dev vlogs so I can do a what groundbreaking update means for the future of War Thunder kind of video like I did with a direct hit. As for the series, I'll do maybe two or more light attackers then cap it off with the A6 intruder. Hopefully a dev server will be out so we can assess what's in it and we'll try to make a video about it. Once again, this is the Dr. MD. Thank you for watching. Returning to the hangar.